Welcome to my basic mechanical engineering playlist. Today I am going to explain throttling colorimeter. So first of all see the outlines of the session, feature of throttling colorimeter, then working of throttling colorimeter, next animation of throttling colorimeter, next principle of throttling colorimeter and at last limitation of throttling colorimeter. So let's see. First one feature of throttling colorimeter. It is used to measure drainage fraction of very dry steam. So very important point. If the steam is very dry, then definitely you can use the throttling colorimeter. If it is very wet steam, then you can use the separating colorimeter. So I am going to list out over here. Barrel calorimeter is used to measure approximate dryness fraction of the steam. Separating calorimeter is used to measure dryness fraction of very wet steam. So keep in mind that throttling calorimeter is suitable for very dry steam, whereas separating calorimeter is suitable for very wet steam. The barrel calorimeter is used to measure the approximate dryness fraction of the steam. So this is only the comparison that we have discussed so far. Now the working of throttling colorimeter. So first I am going to draw the figure so that you can understand the construction of the throttling colorimeter. And you can follow the same steps in the examination also. This is the outer chamber. And this one is the inner chamber. And here thermometer is provided. Next, here the pipe is attached from where you can supply the sample of steam. One wall is provided that is called as the throttle wall. And that's why this calorimeter is known as throttling calorimeter. So keep in mind that this is not the simple wall but it is the throttle wall in case of throttling colorimeter. Then the pipe is extended with holes. So you can see it is the perforated sampling tube and that is also attached with the pressure gauge. So with the help of this pressure gauge you can measure the pressure of the steam initially before throttling. This is the steam main pipe from where you can take the steam sample and which is our objective to measure the dryness fraction of the steam passing through these steam mains. So you can say this is the main steam pipe. The outer chamber that is also connected with the manometer that is sometimes known as YouTube manometer also and here you can see manometric fluid is provided. Generally the mercury is use as a manometric fluid and this whole device is known as YouTube manometer. Now let's see the animation. Here you can see the steam is flowing from the main steam pipe to the throttle valve. So I can write over here the sample of steam at pressure P1 initially is taken from the main steam pipe and this pressure P1 is measured with the help of the pressure gauge before throttling. Next, the steam is passed through the throttle valve where it is throttled. So you can say there is a throttling process. And then it will move in the downward direction. Then it is bifurcated over here and once again move in the upward direction and once again here it is bifurcated and then move in the downward direction. Now see over here, when it move in the downward direction, it is in contact with the YouTube manometer and so that due to the pressure of the steam, the manometer will deflect over here. It is like that. It will deflect. So see carefully. And whatever it may be the deflection that is measured Say for example it is H, so you can say the pressure before throttling that is P1 is measured with the help of the 
pressure gauge and pressure after throttling is measured with the help of the YouTube manometer. And then steam is moving in the downward direction and then collected over here at the bottom most portion of the calorimeter and then it is exhausted. Thermometer reads the temperature of the steam after throttling. Here you can see. After throttling, steam becomes superheated. So this is the condition of the throttling calorimeter. Now the principle of throttling calorimeter. Enthalpy of steam before throttling is equal to enthalpy of steam after throttling. So keep in mind that during the throttling process, enthalpy remains constant. That means enthalpy cannot change. So we can say enthalpy of steam before throttling that must be exactly equal to enthalpy of steam after throttling. Enthalpy of the steam before throttling and you know that this is the weight steam and so that you can say enthalpy of the weight steam is HF plus X into HFG. I have used this one subscription for the initial condition of the steam that means before throttling. And after throttling, we know that always it is superheated. So after throttling, the weight steam is converted into the superheated steam. And you know that the enthalpy of the superheated steam is Hg plus Cp delta T, where delta T is the difference of the saturation temperature and superheated temperature. Here you know that Cps, that is a specific heat at constant pressure of the steam and that is always 2.1 kJ per kg Kelvin. Here T saturation is the saturation temperature of the steam after throttling and that you can find with the help of the steam table corresponding to the pressure of the steam after throttling. And T superheated, that is the temperature measured by the thermometer after throttling. Hg2, that means the enthalpy of the dry saturated steam corresponding to the pressure P2. So that also you can find from the steam table. You can find the HFG from the steam table corresponding to the pressure P1. Similarly, you can find HF from the steam table corresponding to the pressure P1. So with the help of this formula, you can find the dryness fraction of the steam. Now the limitations of the throttling calorimeter. It can't be used if steam after throttling does not become superheated. Because of in the principle we have assumed steam after throttling is the superheated steam. Here you can see. And that's why we have used the equation of the enthalpy of the superheated steam. So if the steam will not become superheated steam after throttling, then you can't measure the dryness fraction of the steam with the help of the throttling calorimeter. Next, it is not possible to find dryness fraction of the steam for very weight steam with the help of the throttling calorimeter. So if the steam is very weight, then definitely it is not suitable to measure the dryness fraction of the steam because if the steam is wet steam then it cannot be completely converted into the superheated steam after the throttling process. Put your valuable feedback on the comment box for motivating me to make more videos. Thanks my dear friends for watching this video.